Okay, this is a video on how to shoot tethered in Capture One with a Fuji GFX50S and also how to convert RAWs to appear in Capture uh, because it's changed slightly. Um, not until making this video did I realize that because before it was a two step process and now it seems to be just a one step process. So let me explain. So you want to tether your camera. My camera's already on. So your destination, I've set it up as all the JPEGs will go in here, then DNG once it's converted and then I'll put the RAWs in uh, after. So preferences, you want to typically have your JPEG and RAW because you can't view the RAW in Capture at the moment, hopefully they'll sort that, they need to. So you can shoot tethered only JPEG but that's good enough for clients I find and you can make any tweaks later on. So I've already made a Capture session somewhere, there you go. Um, so you can have a hot folder enabled, but I just use the uh, favorite section. So desktop, Fuji test, just that folder. And that's the uh, Fuji uh, Acquire app is also pointing there as well for our JPEGs and RAW. So camera is on. I'll take a picture if it will focus because I'm on the 110 at the moment. There you go, that will do. Okay, so it does take a second to come in, um, but it kind of does remind me of digital backs I've used in the sense of speed. So there we go, it's a little blog post about the camera. So that's our JPEG. Also our RAW is in this folder, but our RAW is not showing because it doesn't support the format. So what you need to do is download a piece of software called Adobe DNG Converter. So you want to select your folder where your RAWs are which is Fuji test uh, here, not raw, Fuji test, our rules are there. And we want to put output Fuji test DNG, select folder. Preferences, I say keep them the same because it's, it's a convert, compression device. Okay, here we go. So we're processing. It can take a while sometimes because the files are quite big, 150, but there you go, it's done straight away. Uh, if you've got a big batch of say five, six hundred shots, I guess it's going to take quite some time and yeah, good luck. So, okay, that's now converted, so we'll quit that. Go to our Fuji test folder. Yep. And we have our raw, so we'll put that in there. Our DNG in there. In there. There you go. Oh, it doesn't want to move. Why does it not want to move? Oh, it's already moved. There you go. It's a bit bit slow today because my computer is running a lot of stuff at the moment including a massive Photoshop file. So we'll go to our DNG file. There it is. There's our file. That's the favourites. So there is our raw file. In all its glory. So I haven't noticed any difference between the DNG and the RAF file at the moment. Um, everybody says Capture gives the best output compared to Lightroom. I'd probably agree with them. Uh, let's have a little play, so shadows. So yeah, there you go. Bring that right back. Um, shooting this on the 110, so it might be a touch out of focus because, man, maybe it's not like that, bloody hell. It's not out of focus, it's just rendering, there you go. Pinch up. So, yeah, there you go. That's how you do it. Before it was a two-step process, um, you had to use a program called Photos EXIF Editor, and you had to change the format to uh, IQ and 350, uh, the new phase camera. But since I've updated my Fuji to firmware 1.1, I believe, it's now seemed to address that. And also, I am running Capture 10. Um, Wherever it will tell me. That will capture. Yeah, so capture 10, 0, 0, 1, 9. So that seems to work fine. So that's great because it means it eliminates that process. Um, so yeah, I hope this helps because um, it has changed slightly from the previous video I saw. So yeah, thanks for watching.